Passage of Creation hit a significant milestone last month with the release of Alpha 1. I've been following the project very closely since 2017 and the release of the Alpha 1 was very exciting for me. I want to share my gameplay experience with all of you and because I have so many things to say, I have to split my review into two videos. Today, we discuss all the good things that I saw and soon I'll upload another one or even a couple more discussing more all of the negatives. Yes, there are many problems with the game. But for now, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Right off the bat, I was impressed with the environmental design. The team has done an excellent job creating a barren but beautiful world filled with lovely vistas. It's difficult to describe the feeling you get while you're playing it, but I want to say this. It's not just a nice looking map, it's the feeling you get. You get immersed straight away and you feel that Vera is alive, even though when you first start, almost the whole map is empty of any building structure. I've played nearly any MMORPG out there and in my opinion, Intrepid made one of the most immersive MMO worlds so far. And for me, that success comes from the following three key elements. Vera is packed with different kinds of flowers, small bushes and thick tall trees. This amount of vegetation creates vision walls and small area pockets. So while you are out there gathering resources or hunting down mobs, you can easily get lost. I had to keep checking my minimap to find my way and avoiding aggroing mobs that I couldn't see. So I can easily see the environment playing a huge factor in the open world PvP situations. You have this sense of fear from the unknown hostile environment and I like it. The elevation difference and variety in this game is crazy. To put it simple, I can't remember any other game that I've played that has so many and so significant elevation difference of their map design. In almost every MMORPG, the maps are generally speaking flat areas. They might have some mountains in the background that usually you can't climb or even approach sometimes. For me that's off-putting. The elevation difference gives life to the digital world. It creates new perspective, divides and unites at the same time your areas in a unique way. AUC developers have done an absolutely fantastic job making the most uneven map design that i ever seen. We talk about the rich vegetation the crazy limited difference. However, my favorite aspect of the map design is the ridiculous draw distance. AUC has nailed it, it's second to none. No other MMORPG comes even close to what AUC has done with the run metal draw distance. In the Alpha 1 island, there is an enormous volcano. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. What is so interesting is that you can always see, no matter where you are in the map, you can be across the other side of the world and you can still see it. The only other game that does something like that is GTA. Pretty impressive, right? And only these three aspects have ascended the world of wear to A tier map design. But wait, because there is more. Yes, you're so right. Under the world of Vera, there is an other realm as well. To give an idea how it works, try to imagine that. The Alpha One Island is in total 100 square kilometers. To go side to side across the map takes close to 20 minutes on a mount. On release, the map will be almost 5 times larger. And not only that, 
but an additional 100 square kilometers of other realm. That means a lot of caves. Some of them will be interconnected, some not. Currently, in the Alpha 1, there are just a few cave systems. And from what I've seen so far, I really like it. For example, at level 4, an NPC asks you to save two of his companions lost in a cave. That cave is high in the mountains, between the rock formations and the snow. And as you walk in, you realize that it is pretty big and packed with dead mobs. Killing NPCs in AOC for me feels like playing WoW Classic. In early levels, if you aggro more than one mob, then probably you are dead. That creates a need for a party and an appreciation for your companions. AOC has been designed with social interactions in mind, and you can see that very early on on game. To give you one more example from my Alpha 1 playthrough, there is a level 10 quest line that ends up in front of a volcano. There is this massive open world dungeon inside the volcano. You need a full group, or even better, a raid to complete it. And then, at the heart of the volcano, there is a giant dragon. How cool is that, right? Definitely, there are some issues with the NPC population inside the open world dungeon. However, from a design point of view, this idea is excellent. And I will say it again, that this volcano is visible across the world. So every time you see it from miles away, you remember that there is a dragon there. And if you have a raid, you might kill it and you get something nice. That's awesome! Okay, let's talk about water. This topic really excites me. I hope you find it interesting too. I played Arcade Alpha every day between 12 to 16 hours every single day. And over 90% of my time I spent on fishing. I loved arcade fishing. So, back to AOC. I had seen videos about the new sim model that they made and they seemed nice, but that's it. However, when I played, then the connection was made. The sea looks great, the waves are massive. I can't wait to get a boat and go fishing. Now, if you don't like fishing, then I don't know what's wrong with you. However, you could get your boat, bring your friends, your guilties, and sail across this beautiful sea to explore. Trade your resources, or have some PvP to steal someone else's resources. Just don't steal my fish, alright? Water physics are not implemented yet, and still needs a lot of policing. However, I will say from now that naval contact will define AOC. When someone talks about process of creation, the first or second thing in his mind will be the great naval contact. I firmly believe that. Mounts. Mounts, mounts, and more mounts. It was difficult to decide if I should include this segment in this video or in my next one with all the negatives about Alpha 1. So let me get you through my thinking. There are currently 24 in-game ground mounts. If we include mounts from concept art, they are close to 40. The game is still early in development and the release seems to be many years away. Intrepid sells new mount skins every month, so it is highly likely on the release to have over 100 mount skins. On top of that, an animal husbandry profession will be in place, creating new looking mounts. It seems that we'll have a very high number of mounts in game, similar to Retail WoW. And here is the problem. Mounts 
should separate the hardcore gamers from the casuals. If a hardcore player has a unique looking mount, and the casual player has another unique looking mount, then no one has a unique looking mount. Interrupted knows that, but they want to create a new way to separate the hardwood players from the casuals. They will introduce a three-tier system with land, gliding and flying mounts. Anyone can have a land mount. Les will have a gliding mount and only a handful players per server a flying mount. Currently in Alpha 1, only Steven and its rapid staff has a flying mount. It's still not known what's the limitations to obtaining a gliding mount. However, I believe that having such a high number of mounts and only three ways to categorize them can create serious implications. Devaluing all the land mounts as a whole, the animal husband's profession might solve the issue if it's implemented wisely or otherwise will worsen the situation. My recommendation would be to take advantage of the breeding mechanics. When a new breed mount has a max stat on the speed, for example, then it should leave footsteps with a visual effect on the ground. Similarly, different visual effects should be present if a mount has a max stat on health, energy or armor. I want to know which mount is fastest if it has more health just by looking at them. Other than that, I found that the mounts are very well made and each one has its own animations. On top of that, fast sim mounts will be present. They will play a significant role during naval PvP battles. It is vital to be implemented right on the game. Guild Wars 2 made it. WoW made everything wrong. I hope Intrepid do it right. Assets of Creations mounting will be either great or terrible, but nothing in between. AOC is very early in development, so unfortunately for now, that's all the good things we have. I enjoyed my time playing it, but it's in no way a finished product. The Alpha 1 is not an early version of the game. It's just a showcase to give us a glimpse of what AOC aims to be and nothing more than that. So in the next video, we are going to discuss all the bad, the ugly and the nasty little things I found during my playthrough. Be ready, be prepared. And before I leave, I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. I create videos out of passion only and your views, likes and comments really make my day. Thank you. I'll see you on the next video. Have a lovely day.